I'm Dolo. I'm Dolo. What the gang? What the y'all? Look. What the y'all? What the y'all? I'm on Dolo by the gym. When they pack blocks with the grip. He's like, what the fuck? I'm seeing a motor wall. Uh huh. Golden Gun. Oh, got the. He right, he right there, he right there, he right there. Where, where? He right there. Don't run, Nicole! Yo, got 18-year-old Kevin Perez was taken into custody on Thursday, December 23rd for Oscar Hernandez, a man who was waiting for a haircut on the morning of December 16th. Police say Perez walked by the open door and asked what Hernandez was looking at before a confrontation erupted. The argument continued outside and as Perez started to walk away, he pulled a gun and shot Hernandez in the neck, ultimately. I love him a lot. I'll be back, shit is never stopped. But right now, I'm gonna sit back and watch. Niggas, let me forget him and talk. To my mother, I love her a lot. Dougie, bitch, like, wow, rock, well, I'm back. Like, I'm back. 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 i am What's the drill? Back with another video, man. We've seen the rise and fall of so many young talented artists in the rap game due to the streets. Dudes have a tough time turning that hood switch off when they start attaining fame and success. One rapper, K Flock Mr. Montclair the Nightmare, was arguably the new biggest artist coming out of the Bronx, but bro was hypnotized by the trenches. Mans was spinning the block, busting shots, and blicking ops in designer clothes and Gucci socks. But that landed him right into the hands of the cops, and now he's locked facing years on the clock. Word is he's been having a rough time behind bars, even having a gang allegedly beat him up trying to take his life. So today, we check into his life behind bars. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. The streets that destroy many lives, but this one was sad to see. From a young'un with so much potential, he was caught up in the streets from a jit and it molded him into what he became today, a savage. And K-Flock didn't give a damn about your family or his. If you the ops, then it's smoke. Case in point, his own cousin and him are locked into a beef that dragged their mans into it. Yet and still, they ain't letting off the brakes. Just more ammo for the beef dissing their dead mans. K Flock was a street dude turned rapper, not a rapper impersonating a street dude. That only made his music even more authentic. And with the release of his debut project, the DOA tape, Bro was up. The project features Chicago legend G Herbo for the remix to the hit single Being Honest. That was the moment to start focusing on music and easing off the streets. But it was in K Flock's DNA, spinning the block looking for ops. Look at this one. You know what I do, bro, day, bitch, I'm trying to spin. Sure enough, it caught up on bro. Hints about him being put away behind bars started circulating when he made this cryptic post on IG. Then in December 2021, the police department in New York released a warning poster for K-Flock in relation to a body. The pic was crazy too, man. That's when Mr. Montclair the Nightmare was born. It became certain that the message posted before was K-Flock already knowing he was in hot water. On December 23rd, 2021, K-Flock would turn himself into the authorities. The details soon became available and things weren't looking good for Brody. Authorities initially reported that on December 16th, 2021, K-Flock was on Amsterdam Ave at West 151st Street when he entered a barber shop where a gang member, Oscar Hernandez, was sitting in a barber's chair. They then said Perez, aka K-Flock, passed by, opened the door and asked Hernandez what he was looking at before they stepped outside, and Hernandez was shot in the neck and chest after he followed K-Flock arguing. If what they said was true, K-Flock was looking at some serious numbers. K-Flock had to see in Rikers Island to think on his life ahead. His career was skyrocketing at a fast pace, but here he was now back in a position resembling his old life. There appeared a glimmer of hope that could have eased his mind after his attorney shared that the NYPD said somebody else was the shooter and requested surveillance footage of the incident. The footage was obtained and may be the key to K-Flock gaining his freedom. Flock knew if he had a chance to win this, he needed the best in the game. He got a star player on his team, El Chapo's lawyer. The surveillance tapes were released and it contradicted the story that the news reported. K-Flock is seen walking by the barbershop with who is speculated to be his little sister. Doesn't go inside or nothing just goes his way. Then you see Hernandez open the door and go towards K-Flock after he already passed.
He seems to say something to Flock because K Flock stops, turns around for a second, but continues walking. Probably because his little sis was there and he didn't want her getting mixed up and in danger. Hernandez then continues after them before he was seen falling to the ground and rolling back, clutching in pain. This could also work in his favor with the tip to NYPD before saying somebody else was the shooter. The video doesn't show Flock shooting. He's out of the camera frame. We just see Hernandez stumble back and fall. Still, though, even facing the case ahead of him, Flock couldn't keep his head down and not give prosecutors more ammo against him. His rival D thing happened to get locked on gun possession charges and was locked at Rikers Island too. And what K Flock do? Man's got on a jail call and dropped a freestyle diss suggesting that they cross paths and he put the beat down on D thing. D Thang would then join on the shenanigans and post it online saying K Flock was capping and he gonna send him to medical for lying on his name. These dudes ain't care that they was under the eye of the law or nothing. D Thang said, If you diss me, I gotta diss you and hopped on his own jail call freestyle and was firing back. K Flock, why was I doing that? Because I got hot me, you know that shit cap. And for what, we gon' get to the fact you saw me face to face and you wasn't on that. Like, stop the lying and shit. Every clip I was in, I stopped firing shit, dummy. So I wanna know. Crazy thing is, news started circulating that K-Flock got whooped on and ended up in ICU and is now in protective custody. Suddenly he was being clowned as being soft without a pole and people were saying he was scared to be in Jim Pop. Documents about the region of the facility he was in hit the net to support the rumors. The area is stated to be where the inmates with diseases are being held or on protective custody. More alleged info on the beatdown was surfaced saying it was by the notorious gang the Trinitarios. The dudes are no joke. Remember that team by the name of Lisandro Jr. Guzman Falez that was hunted in the streets and shanked until lifeless in the case of mistaken identity? Trinitarios were allegedly responsible for that. They're a Dominican gang terrorizing New York. K Flock would hop on a jail call debunking the rumors that he was ever touched by anyone. His homie B Love would also call Cap on the rumors in a no jumper interview. So super worried because again, man, like having your dog in jail and then the f blogs, again, lying ass blogs, right? Post like, yo, K Flock beat up in jail today, right? Like, you're ever like, damn, bro, like, is this shit true? Is this shit real? Uh, I got, it was like five of the guys on the island right now. Yeah. Guys is good, bro. Yeah. We ate. Everybody just doing clickbait nowadays. <laughs> to say, like. But later, new photos of Mr. Montclair the Nightmare would hit the net showing him flexing his physique. But one thing stood out. His nose was bandaged up, leading many to believe maybe the rumors from before held some truth. And he was having a hard time behind bars fighting for his life. At the very least, he was looking in good spirits. Small clips began to surface a K-Flock behind bars, like the one where he was trying to contact his brody Dougie B, but he looked to be keeping up. Dougie B, like my rock, I miss you, gang, gangsta. Pick up your phone, too. Even with the rumors and alleged battle scars, Flock was still dropping bangers while locked. His single Shake It featuring Boy 300, Dougie B and Cardi B went crazy and is now sitting at 53 million views on YouTube alone. While Flock was trying to keep the dream and himself alive, his lawyer spoke in an interview about what happened stating that Hernandez was strapped and Flock was acting in self-defense. When the guy hits the ground and is found, he's got a loaded gun that was in his pocket, that his hand was on at the time. You know, we consider that to be self-defense. He also revealed that Bro might have been a demon himself because he had a lengthy rap sheet. So K-Flock basically did what he had to do to fight for his life. Somebody's walking up to you with a loaded gun and it's pretty clear he's gonna use it mm -hmm. with a criminal record a mile long. Do you want to get shot or do you not want to get shot? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger. DJ Academics exposed some important info that may be able to help Flock's case. Turns out an alleged cousin of Hernandez hit him up to clear the air because he thought that the blogs were making Flock look like a savage when he wasn't. According to him, Hernandez came out the barbershop pressing Flock and pulled the pole on him first. And then Flock was ducking the smoke, but then eventually he had to do what he had to do. The guy said that his cousin who died 
pulled up on K-Flock. Then he walked out of the barbershop, pulled up on K-Flock, upped his gun on K-Flock. K-Flock was like, nah, chill, chill. He was like, I bet you don't want no smoke, fine. And he says when the guy kind of like goes to turn around, that's when K-Flock shot him. So basically he was saying that K-Flock was a bitch. And I'm like, listen, don't tell me. Tell the cops, okay? Seems even with the evidence pointing towards self-defense as the way to try and get K-Flock out from behind bars, the court wasn't allowing them to fight the case easily. His lawyer would post the IG asking for a fair trial, stating that prosecutors wanted to keep the witnesses hidden from him so they can't build a proper case. That was on July 4th, 2022, about seven months since K-Flock had been fighting for his freedom. And a twist of what happened to be a miracle or just a stroke of luck, K-Flock got a jail call hyping things up saying he's coming home really, really soon. And fans had their fingers crossed. How bro pulled off beating a body in New York? It was a mystery, but bro was behind bars celebrating with Casamigos. Don't ask how, just know he big Flocko when the man got his hands on some Casamigos while locked up. Self-explanatory. Uh, he's recording. Y'all know what's going on? Fuck it. Yeah. Sadly, it seemed that that was too good to be true because things would get only worse. The law got K Flock right where they wanted him and wasn't going to stop applying pressure on bro. On September 19th, his lawyer would post online on his podcast Beyond the Legal Limit saying that the judge said that she felt threatened when she was about to deny the motion to release the names of the witnesses, the Flock's team, to build their case. The months would go on and K Flock would continue to bide his time, but the case was dragging. A November update from his lawyer didn't bring better news. They were still trying to get the release of the witness names to build their case, but changes were at play. The previous judge, who he preferred on the case, retired and a new judge was put on the court. The lawyer still seems pretty confident, even with the change, but the prosecutors are painting K Flock as a dangerous gang member, saying if they give out the witness names, they'd be in danger. The eyewitnesses are key to Flock's freedom, but prosecutors are playing hardball to keep Flock's team from having access to them. K-Flock has been shouldering the pressure of his life in the balance with all of this happening, but still trying to keep his foot on the gas. On December 9th, he dropped off the project the DOA tape care package to hold his fans over with some music. As of now, no further updates are available yet on his case, but it seems like it ain't been easy on bro, but he's keeping his head up. His ops have made it known they're patiently waiting on him to get out so they can roll him up in a new spliff. Hey, yo, free that man, y'all heard? Bro, free that shit, man. Buddy. We see that man. That's 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 I don't wish that, but we going up. You heard, money? Well, I want him to come home, man. Yeah, I want that nigga home, so let's go. Flock that man. K Flock had it all. But not being able to stop wilding in the streets was his downfall. But all hope isn't lost. His music is still being bumped, so fans haven't left him behind yet. But how much longer till he's forgotten? We wish him the best, hope this opens his eyes to what he had. So if he does beat this, he makes the best of his opportunity and goes on to make some dope music. Until next time, I'm out, y'all.